His name was Esmond Roseborough, and Dunwall was his last hope. <gasps> he had dedicated his life to knowledge and progress, but throughout the aisles, no one would listen. Is that Emily? The Willard Guards were no place for a natural philosopher, but he had nowhere else to go. The poor and hungry gathered there, hoping for a few scraps, and Roseborough wondered if he would soon share their fate. But then he saw something. Something that made him realize his entire life's work was a waste. And it brought a smile to his face. It looks like Pierre. Roseborough's discovery breathed new life in the Dumbwall and made him rich beyond his wildest dreams. But he never took his success for granted. So when young Anton Sokolov came to him with a radical new idea, he couldn't help but give him a chance. Sokolov's ideas ushered Dumwall into a new era of technology. Ooh. But over time, Roseboro learned that sometimes progress comes at too great a cost. Wow. This is beautiful. It's a funny thing, ambition. It can take one to sublime heights or harrowing depths. And sometimes they are one and the same. Oh, <gasps> he's gonna kill himself. Roseboro learned that lesson all too well. What does this mean? Oh my god. I've never heard of this guy. Rose Roseboro? Oh, his that's so cute Esmond stuff. Roseboro, and Dunwall was his last hope. Okay, so someone along with Sokolov who was complicit in just like giving technology that looks like because everything else is black and gray. So, well, no, Steph, you can get into the lore and then when you play with your cousin, know all this lore about Dunwall. But Sokolov was involved with the production of technological advancements for this kind of. I would, he worked with the overseers. Like, he's definitely morally ambiguous for sure. But his glasses remind me of Piero. Bye bye, Jack. Of course. Thanks for hanging progress, out. But throughout the aisles, no one would listen. The awakening. But and he had nowhere else to go. And look at that the intestine. So that's a, a whale skeleton. Um,. So is that whale oil, I wonder? Listen. And where when is this in terms of the of the plague that the spy master released to the poor? No place for a natural philosopher. Natural. But he had nowhere else to go. The poor and hungry oh. gathered there, hoping for it looks like whale oil because see how everything is black or gray or white and then the only color is the blue. For a few scraps, and Roseboro wondered if he would soon share their fate. But then he saw something. Something that made him realize his entire life's work was a waste. And it brought a smile to his face. Roseboro's discovery breathed new life in a dumb wall and made him rich beyond his wildest dreams. I think it's whale oil. I think it's the guy who discovered whale oil. But he never took his success for granted. So when young Anton Sokolov came to him with a radical new idea, he couldn't help but give him a chance. But what's the radical new idea? It is? Okay. Help but give him a chance. It is. I love it. Philosopher. She says she's a little Sokolov's girl. Sokolov's ideas ushered Dumwall into a new era of technology. Okay, so I think it's like Sokolov doing stuff with the whale oil to create the kind of weapons and but over time Roseboro will learn that sometimes progress comes to two elixirs he killed himself with it he put his own discovery into the gun it's a funny thing ambition it can take yeah. one to sublime heights or harrowing depths and sometimes they are one and the same and then, like it's it's powering well, everything now. Well. At what co at what cost? Oh shit! Okay, Roseboro. Was this advertising Dishonored too? 
So we have, I think there's a part two. I wonder, I think that there's Peggy three parts. 18. Do you remember Peggy 18? <laughs> Peggy 18. Hell yeah. The hand that feeds. Peggy it reminds 18. me of Arcane as well. And the studio is called Arcane Studios. Oh, Roseboro. Okay, so that's the original guy, Industries. There's a rat. Once there was a boy who knew only fear and loneliness. The boy had heard stories of better days when Dumbo was a piece of Now we got red. But to him, that's all they were. Stories. Kill the rats. Adults could be cruel, but it was the other children who were truly wicked. So he did the only thing he could, hide in the alleys away from the other boys. What's this? Find comfort from his only real friend. Oh, a white man. He realized he wasn't alone. As the outsider approached, the boy barely even noticed as his hand began to itch. From then on, the boy felt different. Kill the rat. Yeah, I think he downloaded it. That'd be hilarious if we couldn't see it, Val. <laughs> From then on, the boy felt different. He was no longer afraid, and he sought out his tormentors. Who he is this? over them with the stuff of nightmares. No one would be safe. But he wasn't careful. A gift so powerful can be taken away as easily as it is given. It's All not it doubt. It's a single bite. Oh. As his eyes began to weep, he searched in vain for the outsider, but found himself alone once again. He only wanted to see the outsider one last time to thank him, for he would no longer live in fear. For what little life he had left. It's just a random kid. It's just a random kid. Really? To thank him is a single bite. As his eyes began to weep, he searched in vain for the outsider, but found himself alone once again. He only wanted to see the outsider one last time to thank him, for he would no longer live in fear. For what little life he had left. And his rat friend. Oh my god, this is heartbreaking. Sorry, Caleb just texted me. This is like really sad. <laughs> oh, it's a Lego. I don't want that. I don't want customizer droid. No, thank you for me personally. I don't want any more Star, Star Wars. I don't have enough Star Wars. This is wild. So I think it was just a random kid. And we have a one last one. This is such a good ad that marketing, as Seth said. Oh, this one's called In the Mind of Madness. That is a dark one. Oh my God, Corvo. Piero couldn't remember when he'd last slept. Piero. Piero couldn't remember when he'd last slept. The Empress was dead. Domo was crumbling and the plague was spreading. At night, the dreams haunted him. They were always the same. Visions of a young boy dying an agonizing death. But he knew it was no dream. Oh my god. Oh. For Piero, the work was always the same. A handful of coin. A whisper. It should have been easy. Instead, he lost his way. He was a gifted man, but now 
Even this simple task seemed impossible. Curing rats, disease, death. The nightmare had become an obsession. But when the dreams came this time, the boy was gone and there was a hole in the world. into the void and saw death itself staring back at him. And finally, Piero knew what he had to do. It would be his greatest creation. Who it was for did not concern him. In due time, all would be revealed. That's so cool because the outsider is a representative of the void. And so at first I thought like, okay, you're seeing a boy dying. Like I'm really interested in outsider lore. Like if he was ever a person in real life, I don't know if we'll get that in the DLC or in Dishonored 2. But um, the fact that he was seeing a boy dying, like is that the outsider? Is that like a version of Corvo or is that a version of himself? And the fact that, like, Piero's relationship with the outsider is so different from when the outsider does contact someone. Like, I don't even know if he really spoke. I don't think he spoke to because he confronted the void. He didn't confront the outsider who's a representative of the void. He just saw images. That's so crazy. He saw images. And then that's how he was able to make them. And he didn't know who he was making it for. I'm like, this is like a special interest for me. And I know Piero is weird. Like, I acknowledge so weird about the one, I think Lydia or whoever was in the bath. Like, yes, million percent weird. But I do have sympathy for him. And like the fact that he's just so tired and tired of watching people die and i love the use of color in these shorts the red symbol of the so it was the kid from two okay it was the kid from two um but the slow use of color so like the blue at the beginning of the whale oil and then we did see roseboro industries with that kid and then then in introducing red with the second one. And then there's like mostly red and blue. Okay, so it's that's the kid. And it's interesting that that kid had a relationship with the white rat. Like, I think the white rat rats are an interesting motif in Dishonored. Um, Caleb said he was like eating them with his <laughs> high chaos run. The symbol of the dead boy was all on the wall at the end. Okay. Piero knew what he had to do. It would be his greatest creation. Who it's the rats. And the fact that Corvo's mask is the void. It's what he saw when he saw the void. Nothingness. And I feel like I forget how creepy the outsider and the void and the magic is because it's like it's not just like cute mana no you're fucking with like chaos i feel like in the mind of madness has to be a reference to john carpenter's in the mouth of madness it feels like there are some similarities between the two but maybe it's just a common saying um is that a movie? Yeah, 1994. Reality isn't what it used to be. Oh, this looks so cool. I want to watch this. The crosses, the X's, the distorted crosses. I think they're like, 
it they're taking a lot of different elements of horror And then Carpenter got that from Lovecraft's At the Mountains of... Oh my gosh, that is so cool. Let's look at the monster. Oh, never mind. Okay. Okay, sure. Okay, sure. Sorry. Oh my god, this reminds me of what we saw in Dragon Age Veilguard vale 2. Okay, sure. Oh, all right. Oh, mm. it reminds me of one of the gods in Veilguard. I don't know what I'm listening to. Guys, uh, this is an elder thing. Biblically accurate angel, literally. I don't know much about Lovecraft except Cthulhu. I think the cre creepiest part is like we can only go off of our imagination and it's like some subconscious. Me trying to sing hot to go to the street. Girl, it's so confusing sometimes to be a girl. Girl, girl, an elder thing, 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 thing. Oh, yeah, so they're definitely... This is just, like, music made for this shit. No, 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 no! No. Nope. Nope. Someone made this music for Lovecraft stuff. Ah. But yes, I'm seeing definitely the um, inspirations for Dishonored. There's a lot of horror, a lot, but wow, fun. The symbol of the boy. So he was seeing the boy and I was going to say, like, is that the first victim of... The plague. Wait, in the dream of Piero, the outsider took the form of a raven, which means Corvo in Portuguese. Maybe I shouldn't look at... No, I don't think that's a spoiler. The outsider took the form of a raven. But I the, the void is not the outsider. He's a representative. So I guess it is the void. I don't know. And I don't know if there could be more. Like, if they wanted to expand this universe... I think that they could make more representatives of the void. Like he takes on different forms. Oh, the scribbles, chaos, 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 chaos. For better, for worse, exactly, Oliver. The red and the blue. He looked into the void and saw death. Okay, so that is interesting. Corvo does mean Raven. But itself staring back at him. And finally, Piero knew what he had to do. It would be his greatest creation. So like a Corvo as a reflection of the outsider, he and Piero giving him that mask that's a representative of the void. Wow. And low chaos. I think in that, that kind of like personalizes the outsider because it makes him like, like I want him to do low chaos when he represents me. Like I want him to try to be better. I don't know. It's just, I know I need to play the next game. I think I'm going to start it today. I think I'm going to start it. And the gold, then introducing the gold. Because, look, money is gold, and then someone else walks Listen, in with gold. It should have been easy. Instead, he lost his way. This. All the cage. So are those 
cages of for rats for rats yeah Man, but now even this simple task seemed impossible i love that they focused on pierre i just realized something sokolov is more in the present reality sokolov is material his cure is like actual physical symptoms pierre has been more intuitive and magical. And they had to band together to make the cure at the end if you go low chaos. But his is more like floating in the air and it's like spiritual. Perhaps because he saw the, the... death. He saw the void. And he was somewhat contacted by the outsider in an interesting way. He wasn't spoken to, but he just saw dreams and did it. And you know, Sokolov was desperate to talk to the outsider and it disgusted the outsider. <laughs> he was like, bro, you're trying too hard. The nightmare had become You were trying obsession. too fucking hard. You're grossing me out. When came this time, the boy was gone and there was a hole in the world. What if the first one, what if the second one is the outsider? What if that was the out? No, because he existed. Like, he existed before then. Sorry. I just imagine the outsider as, like, originally a, a little boy. Like, the, the, a victim of society. One of Lovecraft's best short stories he named The Outsider. The void and saw death itself staring back at him. No way. And finally. Piero knew what he had to do. It would be his greatest creation. Yep, there's the boy's symbol. Is this addressed or like, is there the lore in Dishonored too? Who I would imagine because this is so. Who it was for to not time, concern. All would be revealed. I love the use of color. So good. Oh my gosh. Hi, salty Nutella. Um, the outsider Lovecraft. You might be on to something. In the, uh, August? No, no, no. April? No, no, no. Sorry. Written between March and August 1921. Published in Weird Tales. A mysterious individual who has been living alone in a castle for as long as he can remember decides to break free in search of human contact and light. I just can't I I would I would not be surprised if they used it for inspiration. So his idol was Edgar Allan Poe. It re represents my literal though unconscious imitation of Poe at its very height and there's like the raven there. Um and then the mask of the red death with Poe and the mask I bet Poe is also an inspiration. Have a great new tell us all day. Yeah, I think we're gonna do Dishonored too. I know. I I he's not a good person. I'm not gonna <laughs> I'm not gonna read his shit. I'll read about it. We can like Well, I don't I don't think that you should definitely like engage with the material, but I'm a firm believer of like we can't ban books or burn them just you have to read it with the context of the author you know um another suggested literary model is mary shelley's novi novel frankenstein the original oh i wonder about okay so this is reminding me so much of dishonored i think that they took all of these og goth and horror elements right exactly stuff nothing wrong with that Take what you need, leave the rest behind, engage critically. Um, and then also Nathaniel Hawthorne's Fragments from the Journal of a Solitary Man in which a man dreams that he's walking down Broadway in a burial shroud, only understanding the shocked reaction of passersby when he sees his reflection in a shop window. I've read Frankenstein. She's our original goth queen. The creature, so... Frankenstein's monster 
causes a shock when he enters a cottage. I had hardly placed my foot within the door before the children shrieked and one of the women fainted. He looks in a pool of water and sees his reflection for the first time. Some critics have suggested that The Outsider is, an, is autobiographical. I know I, always that I am an outsider, a stranger in the century, and among those who are still men. It may possibly be indicative of HPL's own self-image, particularly the image of one who always thought himself ugly and whose mother told at least one individual about her son's hideous face. Never made contact with another person. Okay. Yeah, a lot of people say it's their favorite one. Longing for some type of human contact, he climbs through a window into the room. They scream and flee. And then he detects a presence in the corner of the room. He loses his balance, touches the creature, horrified. Um, he runs from the building back to his castle. Then he tries to go back to his old world through a grate. Cast out of his old existence, the narrator now rides with the mocking and friendly ghouls on the night wind. For when he touched the monster's paw, he felt the cold and unyielding surface of polished glass of a mirror. So it was a, it was a mirror. In gothic fish fiction, ab-human refers to a gothic body or something that is only vestigially human and possibly in the process of becoming something monstrous, such as vampire, werewolf, or in this case, a walking corpse. Not quite human. Subject. Morphic variability. Becoming other. Becoming other. That's definitely connected. Definitely. It reminds me, too, of, like, well, kind of. Stephen King's Randall Flagg. Randall Flagg is more just, like, evil. I feel like the void is very Lovecraftian. I definitely, I don't know if they've ever said that they're, they're references or influences, but that's what it feels like. Anyways, I'm going to take a break. Um, let me change first... <laughs> 